Hey guys, happy Taco Tuesday. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Tori. Nice to meet you. Before we get into today's topic of Jonah, I wanted to briefly cover over some business with you guys and involve you in this big brainstorming process that I started last night on my Instagram. So the whole purpose of this YouTube channel and my Instagram account is to inspire people to want to get to know God on a much deeper level and to show that the Bible holds just as much relevancy today than it did when it was written several hundreds of years ago. And so the Bible is so vast. It is full of so many truths, so much information, so much history, and there are a million places that I could begin but because you guys are the ones that are watching, I want you guys to be getting the most out of my content. And so with that, if you have absolutely any ideas for what you want to see, things that you wish were on YouTube that you don't see or you haven't seen quite yet, or questions that are theological, questions that are kind of fun, questions that are controversial, absolutely any video idea that you have, I want to hear it, and I'd love to brainstorm with you. I'd love for you to be a part of this thinking and creative process because we're all here to get closer to God together. And so even though the question sticker on my Instagram is no longer up, I would love it if you would DM me any ideas you have at my Instagram, at mygodmoments. And if you have any ideas and you don't have Instagram, feel free to put anything that comes to mind in the comments down below. And so with that, we can now get started on today's topic of conversation, which is the Book of Jonah. The Book of Jonah can be found at the end of the Old Testament, along with the other minor prophets, and it is only four chapters long, which means you could easily read it in one sitting. A little bit of background into what the story of Jonah is all about, in case you have not read it before, is that Jonah gets a calling from God to go to a place called Nineveh and preach to the people there, because they don't really know who God is, and so Jonah has his mission from God, but Jonah decides to run away to this other place because he does not want to fulfill the calling God has put in his life. So what ends up happening because Jonah ends up disobeying God and running away from his calling, Jonah ends up getting eaten by a giant fish. And disclaimer, it is not a whale. A lot of people like to tell the story as if Jonah's in the belly of a whale, but the Bible never says it is a whale, it could be, but the Bible just says giant fish, so just thought you should know. Jonah is stuck in the belly of this fish for three days, and within that time, Jonah spends a lot of his time praying to God, and he has a repentant heart, and he gives thanksgiving to God, and as a result, God then delivers Jonah from the fish. So essentially, the fish vomits Jonah back up onto earth. Once Jonah is back on land, God has Jonah go straight to Nineveh, where Jonah preaches and the people are saved, and the book concludes with Jonah and God having a little conversation, which tends to be skipped over because, you know, the being eaten by a fish part is the most interesting part. But it's still an important chapter in the book. While there are so many things that we can take away from this, I tried to break it down into three simple things that we can take away from the book of Jonah. So the first thing that we can take away from the book of Jonah is that when God calls, we better answer. The consequence to not answering the call that God has put on our life is missing out on a life that is purposeful and abundant life because of our own unbelief or our own laziness or even our own pride. What Jonah needed to understand was that God was the creator of life itself. So God knows how to live. And not only that, God created you and me. God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you and God has a calling for you. I mean, you'd think that the person that created this entire universe has even more creativity than we could ever fathom or understand. And so naturally, his plan is going to be far better than anything we can dream up ourselves. So we gotta trust him. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I would much rather be living a life that changes other people's lives for the better than sitting in the belly of a fish. The second thing that we can take away from the book of Jonah is to learn to have a repentant heart. When Jonah was in the belly of the fish, he spent his time in there reflecting a lot and just giving praise and thanksgiving to God. And not only that, Jonah had such a repentant heart and it was because of his heart that God delivered him back and Jonah was still able to do his initial mission. So it's not so much that Jonah has this power to deliver himself because he had a repentant heart, but it's more that God loves to honor 
a heart that is honest, a heart that is faithful, and a heart that is loving and trusting in Him. And finally, the third thing that we can take away from the book of Jonah is to learn to have faith in God's plan. In chapter 4, Jonah has a little heart-to-heart -heart with God and is like, God, I don't understand why you wanted me to preach to the Ninevites because I knew you're compassionate, I know you're loving, so why did you make me go? You would have forgiven them anyway, which definitely is an understandable argument. God responds at the end of chapter 4 and basically says he cares about the Ninevites and he questions Jonah's anger, really. And what this reveals to us is that it is not our job as followers to try to understand God's bigger plan for our life because we simply cannot. God's perception of the world, perception of everything that is happening around us is beyond anything that we could ever fathom, anything our minds could ever handle. And so it's our job to trust that his plan is good because we worship a good God. And so if you're ever in a place of doubt because we're human and we all question things, we're very curious people, definitely cling to what you do know, cling to what is true. And that's really what the Bible is all about. That's what the Bible is for. It's for us to have something to look at and know that this is true. This is what God has said. And how can we still apply that to our lives today? And so with that, you guys, that is what we can take away from the book of Jonah. I hope that you feel encouraged by this video and that you go ahead and try reading it yourself. Shout out to my sister for graciously providing me her bedroom for filming because she's got this gorgeous Great Wave tapestry that I felt was very relevant to today's video topic. Please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content. I post Christian related content every Taco Tuesday and don't forget to send me any ideas that you have so I can add them to my long list and see if I can make it happen. I hope you all have a blessed week and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye!